Hello, welcome back to the Villa View for another video. Now, today we're going to be discussing the Aston Villa faithful, and it comes well themed at the moment, Dan, with several sides bemoaning their manager and their club. Yeah, um, I think obviously we just wanted to make the video, we wanted to do something positive, and to be fair, all season, the season hasn't all, all been rosy, rosy, to be fair. Obviously, we've had some dodgy periods, but for 99% of the time, I'd say the Villa fans have took everything that's happened in, in pretty good grace, and I think our fans have been amazing this season. I mean, to be in the Championship and going to some of the grounds that we've been going to, to, to sell out the away fans for a start every week, and I think the home fans as well, the attendances have been much better than I anticipated. I think the fans deserve a massive pat on the back for what they've done this season. I think it's all accumulated now in the fact that there's a real relationship between the players and the fans, and that can only be positive moving forward and hopefully having a much better season and a successful season next time round. Yeah, I think it's been really good in terms of the connection that's been sort of brought about. Obviously, an average around 32,000 at home games this season, which isn't to be sniffed at by any stretch of the imagination, given the upper Trinity is obviously closed off this season. Then away from home, I think we sold out every game, bar Barnsley away. And at Barnsley away, there's obviously no way to get back in terms of travel links on the way back if you wasn't driving. So we're a credit to the Football League in terms of football as well, these fans are for their dedication they've shown towards the team, especially when the going's got tough this season as well. They've not sort of turned too much on the players, more in comparison to say last season where there was a lot of fans turning on the players. This season it's been a lot different, a bit more patience. Yeah, I mean, there's always going to be an aspect of it. And in, in fairness, I do always think there has been a slightly poisonous element to the Villa crowd. And I'd say that would, that would have rung true even when O'Neill was manager and we were finishing... In the top six, there is always that element that, that get on the players' backs. But for the most part, this season, I'd say that 90% of the fans have been absolutely brilliant and they have been patient. And, and Steve Bruce would admit himself, some of the stuff we saw in January, February was utter dross and we weren't getting the results to go with it. But the, the fans have stuck with the team and I think they see that now they're responding to, to the fact that they know that we've got a manager in Steve Bruce that is proven at this track record. And you can see that there's a plan at championship level and you can see the foundations are now in place to go up next season and have a real good go so yeah, the, the fans have been brilliant it's it's all well and good like Newcastle's fans have probably been very very good this season they've probably sold out at home most weeks but they've, they've been playing winning football they've been top of the league all season there was a period this campaign when Aston Villa were in danger of dropping down into league one if results have continued and obviously we've had a bit of a, a resurgence recently but the fans have been pretty much the same all the way through whether things have been good or bad in my eyes. Sort of realise now with Dr Tony that with the communication there now they sort of realise what the situation is and where we're going with it. If there wasn't any communication between the owner and the fans would this situation be totally different? I think you look at you look at last season we were utter garbage and we were hearing nothing of substance from, from anyone at the club. The, the manager who was in charge for most of the season Remy Gard looked absolutely, absolutely lost. He was in charge of a rudderless ship. And if you're rudderless at the top level, that's obviously going to filter down. I think the, the main thing this season is the fans can see they've got an owner and a board in place that actually have got the, the best interests of Aston Villa at heart. They want to get Aston Villa up into the Premier League. And we've got an owner also that's put his money where his mouth is. I mean, we obviously, I think we probably accepted that we probably weren't going to go up when Roberto Di Matteo departed because we got off to a, a pretty ropey start too many draws cost us early on Bruce steadied the ship got some results got the fans on side we then had a very dodgy after Christmas and there was an opportunity there for the fans to turn on Bruce and although I think they weren't happy with the performances and they maybe got the players a touch I don't think Steve Bruce ever got any major criticism which I would have thought the first time he got a bad run if you'd have said to me he's going to go on a bad run after Christmas I'd have said you'd have had fans starting to bring up his Birmingham link, saying he's not the right man for Villa. But that, that didn't really happen. So the fans have been brilliant. And I think Bruce can honestly say the fans have stuck by him through some tough times. Yeah, and it can only benefit us long term. And that's what's so important now is building that relationship, forging it into next season where it is going to be a really long slog again. But hopefully there's going to be a brighter end to the season in terms of where we finish all being well and I think that's really important is that the fans keep that connection. Obviously, we've seen the season ticket sales already better than any point of the past 10 years or something like that. To have that as a foundation for the start of next season, that says a lot for me. Yeah, that, that can only be positive. We want to try and get Villa Park as, as full as it can be. Hopefully, obviously, we've sold out against Birmingham in a few weeks. Hopefully, that we'll put on a good performance, put on a good show. 
Villa Park will be full and, and rocking and people who maybe stayed away because they're not fully convinced by what's happening at Villa. Hopefully they'll decide they want to come back next season and we can get a full and rocking Villa Park most weeks. Because if we're near, we're near the top of the league, the fact is Villa Park will be full and it will be rocking and that's what, what we all want to see. I know this is a pet peeve in particular for you at the moment. is the situation with Arsenal and Arsene Wenger at the moment and the way that their fans have gone about that whole situation. Villa fans, uh, that even at last season on the Villa View in particular, we didn't see fans ranting too much in the way that it was like on Arsenal Fan TV and it's quite a sad thing to see. I mean, let's get this into perspective. I know that every, every football team in the main will have struggles at some point and I know also that one football team struggles is relative to another. So we've obviously had times where things have gone wrong like last season where Villa fans are moaning, which is fair enough, but then there'll be Coventry fans saying... Oh, what have they? What have they got to, to moan about? And then underneath them, there's probably Leighton Orient fans saying, well, well, what have they got to moan about? Let's get this into perspective, though. Arsenal are the fifth in the Premier League. For me, the way the money's spending, there's only three teams that should ever challenge for the title. I and mean, obviously, the Leicester thing was a complete freak. But there's Chelsea, Man City, and Man U. They're the three teams that should be at the top for me. Arsenal, with the money they spend, fourth is probably, for me, the best they can, they can, they can hope for. They're fifth. I don't, I, don't, I don't remember Villa fans fighting amongst themselves last season when we're sitting on 17 points, bottom of the league, two home wins all season, from one win away, which was on the, on the first day. I just think we did at least carry, carry ourselves with a bit of class last season when we did have a lot to moan about. I, I, I don't get the Arsenal, Arsenal fans. The only thing gripe I think they should have is that they've got a manager who's choosing when, it, when he's leaving, but for them being fifth, they've still got a chance of fourth. I don't, I don't think they will get it, but they have got a chance. I don't think they're too far away from where they should expect to be, and I do find it a little bit embarrassing, to be honest, when I think about what we went through last season and how the Villa fans reacted. Yeah, I think that you've hit the nail on the head there. Arsenal are hardly the big spending power in terms of the amount they're spending in comparison to the likes of Man City, Manchester United, Chelsea, and really, they haven't got a leg to stand here. I think the demise of Arsenal Wenger is quite sad, but I think the way they've treated him is equally as bad. I think that the likes of Arsenal Fan TV perhaps doesn't help the situation at all because obviously that provides a big spotlight towards him. Obviously nothing against Arsenal Fan TV here, but that creates a spotlight. We saw last night when they lost to Crystal Palace 3-0, the way that everyone was waiting for Arsenal Fan TV to see these fans have an absolute meltdown about Arsene Wenger as when it just shouldn't be that way. And I think that we saw the Aston Villa protest group last season. That was quite a success, I think, for me in terms of the ways to go about it. Yeah, our fans are absolutely top draw. I mean, obviously, I'm never going to come on an Aston Villa channel as an Aston Villa fan and slag off the Villa fans. But I think the way we took relegation last season, I think a lot of fans could learn something from that. I mean, you look at the way that Newcastle handled going down twice compared to Villa fans who were basically having a party, acknowledging the fact that we were absolute pish all, all season. I just think you could learn a lot from, from what we did. Our fans... The humour and the way the self-deprivation that we have, I just I just think our fans are a top draw. And we're starting to now see that we've been rewarded for the for the way way we were last season. We're now starting to get have something to get behind, and that's all we want at the end of the day. Some, something something to get behind. If Villa give Villa give you that, the crowd will give you their backing. If I'm seeing a player give 110, percent that gives me more reason to support them than anything else for me personally. And obviously the results matter so much, but. For me, if I'm seeing a player give it their all and the fans are backing them, then for me, the results comes with that. Here's some of the clips that we've actually got from this season of fans celebrating us, chanting us, enjoying their experience in the championship, going to these grounds they've never been to before, whether they're far away, whether they're a bit dull, whether they're a bit downbeaten. Just check out some of this footage because genuinely it proves why Villa fans have been so great this season in support and side.
that shows that we're, the Villa fans have absolutely embraced what's happened to us and, and where we are this season. And I think that, that everyone who's been to the games this season give themselves a massive pat on the back, to be fair. On social media, there's a lot of bit about the Blues game at the moment and the fact that we've sold it out yet. We only get first 2,000 turned up to, say, play Norwich or whatever. But I don't think this is a point that we can make an example of personally for me because if you're the average Joe Aston Villa fan, no disrespect to any Villa fan whatsoever there, if you're going to go for a game in the Championship, you're not going to go and pick a Tuesday night game against QPR. You're always going to buy the ticket for a game like Birmingham City. And I don't think any fan should be made an example of for choosing to do that. I think that it's right that these fans should be there and given the opportunity to be in a sellout crowd for what is such an important game as well. Because for me as well, if you are a fan that's a bit unsure about a season ticket for next season, a game such as Birmingham City could sway your opinion as when a game against QPR really couldn't. I think the timing's probably helped as well. It's come at the right, the right time of the season, the fact that, we, the fact that we're doing well. If we, were, if we weren't doing well, it possibly wouldn't quite be a sellout. I mean, I remember when we played him in the Cup last season, that, that didn't sell out because it was at the time we weren't doing well, we weren't playing good football and we weren't picking up results under Tim Sherwood, so that game wasn't a sellout. This is a sellout because it's Birmingham and because we're doing well. So that is it for today's video. If you have enjoyed it, then please do drop us that like below and also comment on what you make of the way the fans have been this season and subscribe your post notifications on to the Villa View if you are new to the channel. Done. If you enjoyed that video, why not watch another? Click the video choices on screen now to go and watch them in full. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo there on the left. Easy peasy.